talk about Edson. Do you regret taking part yes. in Yes. Because after that, we know what happened. There was this lady, may she rest in peace, who took over. Of course, the lady said that she didn't know how to govern. It was a very, very good opportunity for the Philippines to, mm -hmm. to, to come out. It was our chance. Right? Yes. After, you know, the dictatorship. Yes. Okay. And that was <laughs> The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or the CBCP, it's acts, it acts as a moral guardian of the state, doesn't it? Tries to, mm -hmm. but succeed, succeed, I don't know. Uh, it's always going to be a man's word in, 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 the, in the view of the church. And I think that's reality, you know, even God is Father. About the RH bill. Oh. One thing nice with the church is very old. <laughs> it has survived for 2,000 years. That's why I say don't don't fight the church. The church will bury you, you know? Archbishop Emeritus Oscar Cruz was Archbishop of Linga and Dagupan in Pangasinan and San Fernando, Pampanga. From 95 to 99, he was president of the Influential Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. His outspoken ways, he's been sued for libel has made him an unofficial and sometimes controversial spokesperson of the Catholic Church. He joins us today. Thank you for coming. Why are you so keen against wetting, the illegal numbers game? It started when I came to know of the exploitation of people who are not educated. Mm -hmm. And uh, whom these wedding collectors yeah. fooled. Mm -hmm. Wedding starts with the collector mm -hmm. and then the cabo. Mm -hmm. The cabo is the one who supervises the collector. Mm -hmm. And then goes up to the revisador, mm -hmm. the one who see what numbers mm -hmm. okay. are more, uh, where, where more money, where more bets are, are done. And then there is the pagador uh -huh. that uh, that gives the prices, uh -huh. and then on top you have the waiting lord. Now, slowly but surely, I found out that you cannot have a waiting collector, revisador, pagador, kaha waiting lord. You cannot have this unless it is in cahoots with the local public official, because it's illegal. So, so your point is it is causing corruption in this country? Yes. So you're saying let's start with that one? Yes. But when I say it cannot be there, this mm -hmm. waiting thing, mm -hmm. if it's not because of the public, mm -hmm. local public officials mm -hmm. from mayor, mm -hmm to govern north. So they're all part of this? They're this part of it. Okay. Together with the municipal police mm -hmm. chief and then the provincial chief. They're all part of it. And so this is why I think you have, your efforts have been stonewalled basically to... Anyway, yes, because we have never won the fight. Mm -hmm. I, we, it's too big. Yes, too big, no? Yeah. We have put up two uh, corporations for that. No, no profit, no, no, uh, no stock. To go against it. To go against it because yeah. we are in the Securities Exchange Commission for us to be able to. We appeared before the Senate, mm -hmm. how many times? Mm -hmm. We appeared before the uh, for lower house, how many times? Why not go against all forms of gambling? You know, the Philippines is fast becoming a mini mecca for gambling. Uh, about uh, four years ago, or five, because of mm, the insistence that some of us bishops did the CBCP issued a pastoral letter saying that the church will not accept money from gambling, legal mm -hmm. or illegal. Mm -hmm. It closed the door. Okay. Because formerly, there were all colleges mm -hmm. who accepted money from gambling. Okay. There were also churches when they are building, they accept mm -hmm. money from gambling. From that time on, no. Okay. By the way, even before the issuance of that uh, mm -hmm. pastoral letter, when I was Archbishop of uh, of uh, Dagupan, nobody, but nobody, no politician, is shall not one peso shall we accept mm. any money from any politician. That is a policy. 
but right now, you know, again, gambling casinos, almost in a lot of places in the country, the church has not spoken out against it and no. the concerns. Yeah, and sometimes I also feel bad about this, but uh, that how come I seem to be alone? In your fight? In my fight, why don't they? It's perhaps because it is not their cup of tea, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and I will not blame them for that. No, mm -hmm. But you understand that I also would like to have some people with me, mm -hmm. understandably. Mm -hmm. But so far, I'm alone up to now. Let's talk about Edsa Dos. You were there. And uh, however, you've since apologized for it. You've said, Sorry lang, mukhang wala pong nangyari. Mukhang sumama pa tayo sa dati. Do you regret taking part in yes. that? Because after that, we know what happened. There was this lady, may she rest in peace, who took over. And there were about seven coup d'etat. And then it was a very great opportunity for the Philippines to, to, to arise. Yeah. And whenever I leave for the country, when I, they, people know I'm a Filipino, mm. they were they were practically mesmerized, no, a Filipino, as you see, it's a dose blood disappeared. And then, here in the country, we were worse than before. And I, I'm sad that, of course, the lady said that she didn't know what how to govern, on? in fairness to her, that she was a cook or a housekeeper. House, oh, I'm mom. sorry, you're talking about Korea. Yes. This is the first, it's a, it's a yes. 1986 yes, revolution. Yes, okay. And uh, that's why, to me, I, I was not so, so, so pleased with the turn of events because mm -hmm. it was a very, very good opportunity for the Philippines mm -hmm. to, to come out. It was our chance, right? yes. after, you know, the dictatorship yeah. and all these years. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then later on, you were also part of the, 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 the church, that, the part of the, the, that took out um, Joseph Estrada. Yeah, it's a two. It's a Yes. And again, uh, that's the part where you also regret having been part of it? Not really, because since I became conscious of the social, uh, social dimension of the country, mm -hmm. socio-political, I came to know that while he was, he is not a saint, but I think as far as I'm concerned, former President Ramos did his thing very mm -hmm. much better than mm -hmm. everybody else. Okay. Okay? Right. No, 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 he's not a saint. He's not, uh, he, he's not all clean. But among all the presidents, up to now, mm. he Ramos, was the one who did a good job. Ramos was for mm. me so far the best. And so I was not uh, repentant of okay. it's a dose. In fact, you've become a staunch critic of President Arroyo. Yes. And in fact, you were sued for libel. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? I'm sorry to say this, but really, uh, the past administration was terrible, you know. It was some kind of, uh, to my mind, I could be wrong, no? I could be wrong. Mm. But to my mind, it was corruption incarnate. Come on. Okay. And it was for nine years, for heaven's sake. Nine years. Six years is bad enough. But there was this lady who was nine years and she said, I will not run again all of a sudden the other day. I'm sorry. Things like that. I don't know if you were already born. <laughs> and so I was, I was, uh, and then, especially when it comes to the gambling, gambling thing, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. By the way, during the Marcos time, uh, the, 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 the legal gambling, legal gambling was there in Manila Bay. Correct. It was there in Manila Bay. It was Bay. controlled, right? It was a boat. Yes. So if you want to go to Gum, you have to, go on, you have to take a lunch uh, to go there. And, and so it was former, may she rest in peace, uh, Korea Aquino, who make it land, who took it away from there. And have it I land. think it was because of the economic realities, right? I mean, we, no, we needed there the were money some people who were maneuvering it because uh, there were some people who were. And, that, and that's why from there on it crawled, it crawled on out. And then now. the libel suit, and how did that come about? Yes. So I was picking against this because there was a time when the first gentleman had his birthday mm. and they used the marketing assistants. And the marketing assistants are the pagkor 
marketing uh, assistants. I do not know what they were marketing. I do not know what they were assisting, but they were called marketing assistant. And uh, I said, I think you wrote a column. Yes. About it. Why is it that? Yeah. Why is it that the marketing assistants have become all of a sudden the receptionist at the birthday of the of the first gentleman? And I said, come on, uh, uh, women organizations come to their help. Mm. In fact, I was protecting them. Mm. And all of a sudden, I was sued uh, for 90 counts of libel. And, and uh, you had to post bail I had to, to evade uh, yes, jail. Yes, I had to post bail. And mm. uh, after what it was jumped by the Supreme Court, no? and that was it. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or the CBCP, it's acts, it acts as a moral guardian of the state, doesn't it? Tries to, mm -hmm. but succeed, succeed, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You've been a priest for 50 years now. Yes. And in that 50 years, what have you noticed about the morals of the Filipinos? Oh, we old bogies. We always want to say that our times were better. But it was better. Doors can be left open at night, you know. And, uh, girls are respected. Women are not uh, violated. Uh, but we were poor. But with the poverty, precisely the wonder of it came honesty and integrity. With the, with the wealth and with all the power and influence come all this corruption, etc., et decay, you know? Speaking of corruption, you've said corruption is a crime that cries to heaven for vengeance. It is systemic and endemic. You've also said that overpopulation is not the issue, but the system. What is that system you talk about? The system is keep them poor, keep them few. And then I will have a command over them. This has been. Who uh, is commanding over them? Uh, the ones, especially in the first world country, mm -hmm. Europe included, mm -hmm. these are the ones who do not want Asians to multiply because we will re consume most of the commodities. Mm -hmm. They might have nothing left. So it is, I, I do not want to use the word conspiracy. Remember Hitler, mm -hmm. he was, he didn't like the Jews. Mm -hmm. He had them sterilized mm -hmm. so that they will not multiply. Mm -hmm. It's along the line of the survival of the fittest, you know. So we're the Jews of Asia. <laughs> you know, the most beautiful thing my mom ever did for me was give me the Bible. I think the beauty of the Gospels, Jesus' words, is that it talks about social justice, love, compassion. Is, is that what influenced you into becoming a priest? No. Oh. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't how know. Did you, how, how, how did you end up being a priest? I don't know. I, 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 uh, <laughs> you woke up uh, one day and you were I was I was a normal fellow uh, uh -huh. running around and fooling people and uh, uh, kidding girls. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I, it was my brother who wanted to become a priest. Mm -hmm. And Not what happened? What happened to your brother? Uh, he died. He, di he died. He was 14. I see. And I think he worked it out there, so I'll take his place, which I did, you know? And why? I don't know. I have never. Yeah. Uh, it's not in me. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and the holy... <laughs> and, 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 and it's true, you do not seem to be, I'm sorry, a, a, a typical priest. I mean, I'm not in the mold. I'm not, yeah, exactly. I'm out of the mold. I am, Correct. I, I am not in the mold. Uh, yes. It's perhaps because I, just, I am not meant to be one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd met a policeman the other day yeah. and, you know, I had asked him, he was at the anti-organized crime unit, and I had asked him, out of 10 Filipinos, I said, who how many do you think do bad things? And he said, six. So I said, six, wow, that's a lot. And, and I asked him, you know, it's a Catholic country, um, but uh, wh why do you think that, you know, six out of 10 people do bad things? And he said, it was because maraming nagihira. So, you know, my question is, shouldn't we work on 
the well-being of the people first? There was a time that the church was the one doing the social work, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember that very well, we do not hear of the government or the state doing it. It was the church always with the feeding and then the orphanages and the this and the that, the beggar. And correct, correct. Then little by little, the government took over, which is very good. And the church was, mm -hmm. that means to say that the government has learned somehow yeah. about this, the question of taking care of the poor. But is, are they doing a good job? They're doing a good job by using them. Using them? Poverty and democracy cannot coexist. Because whoever is poor is not free. Mm. Misery and sovereignty cannot be a pair. Because the miserable can never be sovereign. You think about that. How can a poor be free? Supposing I were a, a papa, I had a father, I had three children, and we could barely make it. You mean to say I'll not sell my boat? What am I, a martyr? So, so, so what you're saying, then what you're saying is, look, the government, it is not in them to do something about the poor. The church, can the church do something about that? Yeah. But it's in its mission. Yeah. And, and up to now, it's doing it, no? Uh, in, every, uh, in every parish, in every diocese, there is a social action program. Correct. Usually for livelihood, mm -hmm. usually for, uh, for this, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 learning things, mm -hmm. huh? learning how to cook, okay, learning right, how right, to, right. Uh, doing little understand. things, no? Uh, curbing, pottery, etc., etc. But it's not enough. But I will go a little further. I will say that in fact, there is this belief that religion is one of the reasons why we are poor. I think the writer F. Sionil Jose best illustrates this when he writes, religion is the opium of the masa. They don't realize that they are hungry, that they continue to be poor precisely because of their so-called piety, which is not coupled with a political ideology that would energize them to act and compel government because religion entertains them. His points. Religion, like showbiz and politics, are there to keep us entertained to the point of complacency. And in fact, religion needs us in this state because material progress means empty churches. Do you think there are valid points there? There is some reality there. I would not say it's all wrong, but that is not the total picture. No? I think uh, the total picture is much more than that. That is just one aspect of it. Pietism uh, keeps one cozy, Correct. and uh, God will provide, you know, and I leave everything to Him, as if God did not say, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat your bread. That's why... But, but you can see that, I in a way, it, religion does keep us cozy, that's the word. Right? Yeah. I mean, we could be in the shanty, feel, but it, we're thinking... You hey, feel co comfy. You feel comfy. You would say, be, be, uh, uh, be content with the little Correct. you have, yes. but the opposite is worse. If you will say, get as much as you can, I think that's even worse, you know. Western civilization has seen the decline of organized religion. I think this is in part because spirituality is not tackled by organized religion. You know, spirituality in the sense it attempts to answer the questions of why we are here, our purpose, what are we here for, and the ideas of love, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance. Uh, do you think the church can fill that vacuum? I would say yes and no. Christ himself was a failure. <laughs> why do you say that? Because there were people precisely who rejected him and he was crucified. Okay. And who listened to him? Uh, but then, after that, of course, the disciples, uh, apostles went in and, uh, and the Christianized word. the world, you know? But the very author of uh, the faith, humanly speaking, was a failure mm -hmm. now. But it's been only 2,000 years. Yes, but what I'm saying is this. The church, like Christ, has to preach. 
whether you listen or not, that is your call. That is your call. And the church does that up to now. What is it preaching enough about love, compassion, and all of those things? I do not seem to hear that often. That's, that's my point. Yeah, but even that, you see, humanly speaking, it will be, a, you will have a very, she should have a very, very uh, profound spirituality to love your enemies, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and it's and not that's easy. That's what asked of us. Yeah, it's not easy. Correct. That's why those really who can who can have uh, uh, captured a deep spirituality will find this rather okay and easy to do. But those who are just as normal as everybody, practically everybody, well, that's, that's not easy. Correct. Because otherwise, for example, I'll just keep quiet. As, uh, they call it the three, the three monkeys. Mm. No, see nothing, say nothing, hear nothing. When I see these things happening, you know. Mm. Gambling here, prostitution there, murders here, uh, massacres there. And I've been vocal about that. Yeah, and, and I'll say, ha 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 ha, and does that not say anything? Is that the way it should be? Now, if I don't say anything, that means it is okay. And in fact, you've mentioned the two types of, 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 of clergy, right? The vertical and the horizontal. And the horizontal. Yeah. Could you let us know? The verticals between me and God, God and me, me and God. That is the vertical. That is the vertical. The horizontal is between me and neighbor, neighbor and me. And you see yourself in the latter, in that part. Yes, but be careful. Because some verticals are too verticalist. That it is just between me and my neighbor, no God. And that is where communism is. Mm -hmm. Dictatorship is. Because it is too horizontalist. So it should be a balance of some sort. And that is the cross of Christ. The vertical and the That's vertical. why the church is a social doctrine. Mm -hmm. And it is always said that the social doctrine of the church is the best kept secret in the world. Mm -hmm. Because we never talk about, about it. it. No, if you think about it, that's exactly what the message of Jesus Christ was. And that's, I think, what the Second Vatican Council wanted to do was make sure that his message was being spread out. And because of that, you had a more involved laity, more social consciousness from the church. But now, do you notice it becoming more conservative? Am I correct? Correct. Because uh, there came a time that churchmen were being politicized. It is just going up the pendulum from one mm -hmm. end to the other. Okay. It should be at the middle. Yeah. Okay. So when it goes there too much, there's going to be wrong, going there. Gonna, that's, uh, again wrong. So some of us, priests and bishops, have become, have become very socialistic, you know. Mm. In fact, socialist. Some of us are even Even gone up to the mountains? Yeah. Correct. Priests. Yes. And uh, some of us... They took the message to her. Yeah. And some of us go to the monastery uh -huh. and stay there. Now, these are two uh, terminals, no? Correct. And uh, I think most of us are not there. And it is... It is it is harder to be uh, in between, you know, because if I am godless, I'm godless. If I'm too godful, I'm too godful, no, <laughs> no problem there. But the moment you are in mm -hmm. the middle, which is the, supposed mm -hmm. to be the virtue, mm -hmm. in, in, med, in major start virtues, mm -hmm. that is quite difficult. Okay. In, in, in fact, you know what happened to the leadership conference of women religious in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Them being put under the forced guidance of the Catholic Church because they were assessed to be undermining Roman Catholic teachings on homosexuality and birth control and promoting radicalist feminist themes. Mm -hmm. I, think I think this is an example of that pushback effort, yeah. right? To, yeah. to be more conservative. Yes. And the church is saying, look, I think we're becoming too more too people oriented. Not oh only that, God. they would like to become priests. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have nothing against but, that. But I'm just saying. Uh, it, no, it's okay with me if you become priest, but I, it has been for centuries that there is no way. Even, even the Blessed Mother was not a priest, you know? But, but you know, let, let me, let me Go bring ahead. my point on that. You, you and I know that the greatest women in our lives are our mothers. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Right. Yes, 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 yes. They took care of us, right? Look at, look at us, they raised us well. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I mean, obviously us men haven't done a great job. If I understand you, my mother took care of me. Mm -hmm. My mother uh, they did taught a great me. Job. They yes. did great. Those they are maternal things, you know. Correct. Yes. 
but I think the world needs more than that. I <laughs> <laughs> and I think still, when my mother was able to take care of me, when she was able to nurse me, to feed me, I think my mother, my father was the one handling her the goods, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you think the church is open to the idea of ordained women? Nah, because it is not uh, neither in the scriptures nor in tradition. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always going to be a man's word in, 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 the, in the view of the church. And I think that's reality, you know, even God is Father. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a Godmother now, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'll wait for that, mm -hmm. but up to now, even God is Father, and then there is the Son, and then there is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it, no? And then, of course, there's the Virgin Mary, which is, which is Mama. Sure. But that's it. And I don't. I don't feel the man that it is triumphalistic for men mm -hmm. to be priest, no? Mm -hmm. Big deal. So, okay, you are a priest. What? Are you above the mold or are you out of the mold? Are you I, I superior than others? I, I think that's how uh, some priests think. Yeah, well, too, too bad. It's not <laughs> that way. It's not that right. way. I have this population meter. It says here, population of the Philippines, not enough, just right and says overpopulation. Where do you think the Philippines is? I will tell you that we are more than how many we should be and I have a reason of the OFW. The OFWs are about 12 million and they are the ones incidentally whom we could say are the surplus of people in po Philippine population mm -hmm. but they are the ones who is maintaining the Philippines economically afloat by their dollar remittances. So in, in, in that case you're saying, look, we're fine population-wise because anyway they're going to go abroad and then... No, no, I'm just saying that population is not really an all the negative thing. Mm. Come on. Because there are some places in Africa where practically there are no people and they're mm. so miserable. Mm. So you cannot say big population because poverty, mm -hmm. no population is, is wealth. That is not true. It's a question of how the government mm. is manages the, uh, the country okay. and, and what it does with the taxes. Mm. I'll be honest, I'm still quite ambivalent about the RH bill. Um, I hope you can help me decide. There are issues raised by both sides of the spectrum. And one of that is, you know, in including 400,000 abortions, crushing poverty, inadequate health care, lack of education, who do you think is going to address those issues? It will be very hard for me to say that with RH bill, those issues would be resolved. Okay. Meaning to say, okay, there are issues, no? Yes. So, resolution, solution to the issues, RH bill? I don't know. Possibly not. Oh. Now, then I ask you, what is the solution? The solution? Ah, yeah. You know, one thing nice with the church is very old. <laughs> it has survived for 2,000 years. That's why I say, don't, don't fight the church. The church will bury you, you know? <laughs> Pray over you when you're dead. So, the church has never said, be as many as you like, never mind. It's, no, no, no. Because that is irresponsible. But that seems to be the message that that no, no, we no, are no, getting no. that you know what yeah, they make babies then that is the wrong message the right message even then even the church has always been from the very beginning is called responsible parenthood and you can see this in the doctrine of the church and even in, in her in her laws she has a universal code no it says that the parents have children that they can afford to support and to educate and to form and that require that is responsible okay. But some of us really are, you know why we are, some of us are irresponsible? Because we are so poor, we have nothing else to do but that. And a, a lot of families live in the same room, etc., mm. etc. Et but, but that when you meaning having sex, that's yes. what you're saying. Yes. So then, okay, so that's the issue. Then how, how do you address that, that these people love sex and uh, how do we control So the thing that? is that when they are economically sufficient, mm. then they'll have a little house, perhaps separate rooms Correct. for the children, etc., etc. How are we going to be economically that's sufficient? That's it. So we have to propagate the idea and the doctrine of responsible parenthood. 
So we need to go out and teach these people to be yes. responsible. It, who it, is going to do that? I don't, the church always does that since the very beginning. And the thing is, people don't listen to. As I told you, they did not Nobody even listens. listen to Christ. And, and, so, so that's where the point now. They're not going to listen to the church. The government is not going to do anything because for them, like you said, I mean, you know, they really don't care about the poor. I mean, that's what it seems that, you know. So who? Who will look after these people? Who will educate the them? The people will have to listen somehow. The church will continue preaching as Christ continued preaching. And they better listen because I do not think in the past 2,000 years, uh, the church has been listened to more. And let's, uh, for example, I'll tell you. Since I was small, since I was young, and I was I'm very old, the church has always said, "Do not kill each other. Do not kill Correct. each other." But we still end up killing. Yeah, each other. but we yeah. still end up yes, killing. Uh, no war, and, least, and yeah. the war is going on in the Middle East, Correct. Correct. and we never learn. Yeah. We never listen. Mm -hmm. So. To, to bring that back, if they're not going to listen to the church, then the government's not doing anything. Wh what is going to happen to us? Then it is a question of, again, people, please wake up and listen. Because if you don't listen, you lose. Then maybe that's the message that we should send out now. I mean, it's nothing to do with the RH bill. I mean, junk the RH bill. But then we need action from the church, yes. from the government. The church has family life apostolate in all parishes. This is what they call pre-Cana and Cana. These are conferences that are given before couples are married and after couples are married, before and after. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, the, the natural family planning is here. Mm -hmm. so we, so, go ahead. Have you noticed a chicken and a rooster? Okay. So they meet, no? Mm -hmm. Then they mate. Mm -hmm. And then the girl head starts laying eggs. Mm -hmm. You will never, never see the rooster because he is not welcome. Mm -hmm. The hen will hatch the chicks, mm -hmm. will take care of them, mm -hmm. will be with them one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month until the chicks are on their own. While the man, where is the rooster? No, only after that will the mama hen allow the rooster to come in. Mm -hmm. That is responsible. And that is natural family. And even May we all and, be and chicken uh, No, then. and I said even roosters do it. And chickens. <laughs> and we don't do it. We are supposed to be the rational creatures. That's debatable, of course. Now, my question. My question is, so the church now agrees in responsible parenthood, meaning, um, Yes, you can have sex as a man and wife without the need for procreation. Just be aware of how you can stop having kids, right? Am I correct? No, no, that is uh, the, the, the fertile period. Yes. That, that so you are, you are fine with, you know, the, ch the church, may I use the term, the church is fine with having sex as a man and wife without the need to have children, right? It's because it's the natural, it's ac according to the dictate of nature. Even if you do want, uh -uh. it doesn't happen. Okay. So, um, so we just need to know as man and wife, uh, we need to know, okay, honey, we can do it now because yes, it's safe. Yes, You're fine with that. Yeah, because okay, of the of family planning. I'm a bit confused. When I was young, I was told that sex was just for procreation. So now it's saying it's okay. No, no, no. That was a wrong uh, understanding. Meaning Somebody to say should have told me this. <laughs> <laughs> that, is it, that is what I'm telling you. People never learn, you know. Uh, but I thought that's what the church was telling me. Well, the church through my mom was telling me. Procre procreate every, every Correct. Every you every can every only have sex for <laughs> procreation. So no. All right. Okay. I, I just want to And that there's an old doctor is that you. I did that. It's that it didn't start with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're trying to figure out how to save the Philippines, right? Now I have a suggestion. Kung okay lang. Let the women run the church and government. You guys excommunicate the corrupt and criminals. The church gives away its billions, 20 billion, I think, invested in banking and mining to support those reforms and tell the rich to give away the riches because uh, tell them it's the surest way to go to heaven. What do you think? It's a novel. Write about it and you will get a lot of uh, tickets sold. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, I've always wondered about this. If Jesus Christ 
ever came back and paid us a visit, what do you think he would do and say? I think he would, he would do what he did exactly when he was in the temple. When Derita said that the people were bartering money, selling this, selling that, and he drove them away and he was angry. In fact, he even grabbed a, a latigo to, to drive them away. I think Christ you would think do that's that. The, that's the Jesus Christ that would come back? Yes, yes, I think. Because really disappointed, you think? He'd be disappointed after 2,000 years, this is I still what's so. going that's on? I think so. That's why he's coming back. <laughs> See? This is, this is the, the key here. Uh, the fellow is coming back. <laughs> and I hope just for a visit, not the second coming, right? Well, I'm talking about the second coming. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. Archbishop Cruz. Thank you for coming. So, I mean, Thank, you Thank you, too. Thank you, too. And uh, uh, there are things which, uh, there are many things I don't know. And at times I'm wrong. And it's okay, so that I'll be the man quite, uh, quite receptive of the fact that I cannot be always right, no? Mm -hmm. And that's good because if I'm always right, that's very bad. Humility, isn't that such an important that part is of not humility. Humility is truth, you know. And uh, there are people who are humble and yet they are, they are pride incarnate. I know some of them. <laughs> In government. <laughs> and outside. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. God bless.